Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to The Head of the Serpent for Negroes, a reply part 2. And this very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that this video is not a propaganda or entertainment video. It is for educational, informational and reference purposes only. Please look for the referenced sources and study them yourself. Remember, the Negroes from this country were in Johnson's time the wildest and most dissolute. They could not be restrained even under any military discipline and yet at that time they became transformed by the gospel into lambs. C.F. Bloomhart, 1799 and this is from the book Christian Missions or a Manual of Missionary Geography and History published 1799. And from Charles A. Swan in 1909, we have a girl about Jitenje's size who was to be sold to a white man but who ran off before the bargain could be made. She won't be an easy piece to manage unless she comes under the power of the gospel. The white man makes the negro a brute and then says he should be treated as such and this is from the book the slavery of today or the present position of the open soul of africa published 1909 in part one of this response video we sent question to a conscious youtuber called the real macaba who claimed that blacks in africa sold the so-called african americans into slavery remember that narrative presents the negroes as not being human Remember, there is no way you can walk into a man's house and take him to go and sell him without military force and he doesn't resist. He just walks and follows you. And that was why we cited one of the materials in our opening quotes of a girl who was to be sold and she ran away. And also, we highlighted that it is impossible for man to just be sold and it turns out as women and children in slave ships in Boni, Calabar and Badagri slave ports. Remember, most times we concentrate in the bite of Biafra and Benin and you may have also noticed that those researchers, despite all they do, they carefully avoid those two areas which was exactly where the bulk of the slaves in what is now United States of America that was formerly a plantation came from. And again, that any man or woman must resist being sold and that the slave master's claim of a sale is a lie because they were hunting and capturing the negroes and claiming that they were not human but beasts lower than cattle this was their claim these are all documented there is nothing we are saying here that we expect you to believe us our expectation is for you to look for the referenced materials and study them yourselves and please never forget that most of your lecturers and professors know all these things but those that pay the piper detect the tune that's why they don't tell you the truth. We also went on in that video to maintain that the code in Exodus 21.16 that said whoever steals a man and sells him does not make sense to us as you can't steal an adult man or woman even without him or her resisting. That's impossible. And if you looked at the completing part of that statement, it says and he is found in his hands as if man was just an article but remember at that time the reason the slave master uses slaves negroes and all those terms was to present the negroes as not being human you can see him doing exactly the same thing in his narratives against biafra and ambazonia today where he uses the terms separatists secessionists and rebels and we have to always remind you to ask who are they rebelling against the slave master and it becomes very easy to see that he uses a different term for his own siblings. For example, the Scottish people are not called separatists or rebels or secessionists, but they are called nationalists. But unfortunately, like we told you, their slave hunting accomplices in a place like Nigeria, in a place like Cameroon, they lack both humanity and common sense. So they join the slave master to call their supposed siblings rebels, separatists and secessionists because they are not intelligent enough to ask themselves why will this man or woman in UK conduct Scottish independence referendum and come and give me guns to kill my own siblings? That's because 
they lack both humanity and common sense. So if you doubted us before, we challenge you to investigate things yourself. In the second part of this response video, we shall examine the comment from the viewer called JL Maker. He quoted uh, Matthew 7:20, where it says, Wherefore by their fruits we shall know them. But we are still wondering which fruit did we bring that can be worse than the slave master's fruit of shedding innocent blood of men, women, and children. We also wonder which fruits could we have brought that is worse than the slave master's fruit of dangerous drugs and vaccines used to upset the balance of nature. What about the slave master's fruit of enslaving others or classifying fellow humans as animals or beasts? Which ones are worse than us presenting what they wrote to somebody who claims to be a Christian or a Muslim or an African for that matter? And in the comment we are responding to, he joined the slave master's bandwagon of subterfuge narrative of calling the Negro's relationship with the almighty creator of heaven and earth if we assumed there is something like that which is simply nature in the real sense of it as juju. Juju as a word is foreign to the Negroes and coined by the slave masters. Remember the slave master comes to your place and chooses what he wants to define everything about you as. And if you don't understand how he does this, we want you to take a closer look at a place like Biafra and Ambazonia. You see how all the media in Cameroon and in Nigeria define those of their supposed siblings who ask for freedom as separatists, secessionists or rebels. And don't be deceived, the governments in those areas, which are also mere golden calves because they are the slave master and his accomplices. So the slave master rules through his slave hunting accomplices. So they force the media to define those looking for freedom as such. So they are not allowed to say that these people say they are looking for freedom. They are only allowed to say what the slave master wants them to say. Remember we told you those that pay the piper detected the tune. So we shall show you why the slave masters want one Nigeria and one Cameroon and you will understand it better. So we ask, how could a people relate with a deity with a foreign name and identity and still claim it is local? So if the word Juju is not African, what criteria did the slave master use to define whatever the Negroes are doing as Juju? But unfortunately it stems from the Negroes emulative nature of copying even the wrong things from the slave master but some of them cannot be blamed on the negro like we told you about calling those who seek freedom secessionists separatists or rebels the slave master causes that but he hides behind his slave hunting accomplices to do it so when those slave hunting accomplices who are not negroes but lack humanity and common sense say it everybody will think because they are saying it, it means their brothers are really separatists, secessionists or rebels, whereas it's actually the slave hunters, their descendants, working with the slave master against the Negroes, which we challenge you to investigate. Ask any of those in media in Nigeria, you will see that they were forced to be saying that. That's what they are commanded to do, because the slave master is a subtle beast. So he hides behind his slave hunting accomplices, knowing that they lack both humanity and common sense to perpetuate his evil against his fellow man. He went on to claim that the Juju God did not write any books and we asked him how Adam, Abraham, Jacob, David et al related to the God in the Bible and Quran before humans invented books and writing. He also expressed the belief that religious books are real stories that actually happened somewhere or at some time or some place. He went on further to question who could have called the so-called priests back then, that is those the slave master met on ground practicing the original negro way of life at that time. He claimed that only one tribe knew him in Nigeria even when he talks to no one. But interestingly, he forgot that the slave master's deity, God or Allah, has a masculine gender even when no one has ever seen any of them before so how did they know whether he was a man or a woman and this is quoted in john 1:18. and remember before the coming of the slave masters of the arabs and europeans who came as slave hunters to the area the negroes did not worship but communed with what they believed was the creator of heaven and earth and obeyed the laws they believed were handed down to them 
by their ancestors and in some records the slave master actually documented that when asked why they do certain things they will reply that was how they inherited them and again he also forgot that the word priest is a foreign word used by the slave masters to define what they saw the people doing so the people had their own terms for those he called priests so that they turned it to english may not mean exactly the same things as what they meant to the people and as such if they were priests the slave master would not need to bring his own priests and culture and define them as devil worshippers so they were something different we don't know what they are but we certainly know that they couldn't have been the same as the priests you are shown today but a little example is in a place in southeastern nigeria today where they have something like mami water both mummy and water are English words. So what did they call whatever thing they worship? They claim to be worshipping mummy water, which the slave master told them is mamed as well. So if mamed and mummy water are both English words, what did they call that thing before the slave masters came? And to add a historical background and backbone to what we are saying, let us reference a new and accurate description of the coast of Guinea, divided into the gold the slave and the ivory coast containing a geographical political and natural history of the kingdom of the countries with a particular account of the rise progress and present condition of all the european settlements upon that coast and the just measures for improving the several branches of the guinea trade and this was originally written in dutch by william bosman chief factor for the dutch at the castle of st george delmina and now faithfully done into English. Remember, this Elmina is in Ghana today. So when you hear about the Elmina Castle, these are the people that worked there. So if you want to say what they are saying about the slave trade is a lie, we want you to tell us where you are getting your own information from. And this was published in 1705. And here we see that I say this is not so over marvelous, but when we come to the carcasses of these men, how the Dahomies had made a festival of their flesh in the night, it swells to incredibility. Captain Snaregrave was not an eyewitness of this indeed. He says the bodies lay a little while on the ground to drain the blood and then were carried by slaves to a place near the camp and laid in a heap. He saw two of these heaps overnight containing, he judged, about 400 who had been chosen out by the king that morning for sacrifice. So our interest is 400 there. So they are telling us that 400 people were sacrificed. But he goes further to say, on the next morning they were gone and asking the linguist what had become of them, he answered the vultures that is ravenous birds, very plentiful in the country, had eaten them. Not satisfied with this answer, seeing nothing remain but blood, we asked for the bones, and then he confessed that the priest had divided the carcasses among the people in the night, who had boiled and feasted on them as holy food. The head is for the king. So this would mean they sacrificed 400 people, and there will be men or women or both in which case they would have made widows and orphans and whatever you might call it in the community, which is impossible. If they were doing all this, how many people would remain in that society? And also, we want you to compare the narrative of sacrificing 400 men or women or both men, women and children in one night and nobody does anything, everybody stands there. Even the men that are to be sacrificed, they all stay there. Remember, these were the stories they used to present the Negroes as not being human. So when you want to kill them, they won't even know. They don't respond anyway. So they were using them to justify the slave trade, which we challenge you to investigate. It is the same thing they are calling rebels, separatists, and secessionists. Now we ask you, what is wrong in somebody asking to be free in a country? Why do you think the so-called professors we have, the lawyers, the so-called senior advocates of Nigeria in a place like Nigeria, do not ever ask the slave master, especially the British, why is it that you don't kill your brothers in Scotland when they seek independence, but you come here to tell us to kill our own people, give us guns, and even give us words to define them as? This is exactly the same thing they did here. 
So at that time, they will use their slave hunting accomplices to propagate these lies. So when you are listening to them today, they will be telling you rebels, separatists and secessionists. They will even go from behind, kill innocent people and tell the world that it was done by separatists, secessionists or rebels. So the world will believe them and will never believe those people that are looking for freedom because the sensible people will ask, how can you kill people and say you are looking for freedom? They won't even know that it is the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices because of their lack of humanity and common sense. They go and massacre innocent men, women and children just to frame and demonize those who seek freedom unfortunately. And here on a side note, you see where it says wider, which you hear some so-called Hebrew Israelites claim is Judah and it's related to Judah. They then go ahead to read themselves into the misfortune of the slave trade by claiming that it was ordained by the Most High, whatever they call the Most High or whoever it is, we have no idea. But they read themselves into the narrative of the slave trade and justifying the slave master's atrocities upon the Negroes. And further now on what we were looking at and the individual's claim of the slave master's golden calf of Christianity being through while the Negroes original way of life could have been false even when the Negroes were not doing the evils the same way the slave masters of Islam and Christianity were doing. We see here that the Negroes ignorance of good and evil was equal before their acquaintance with us and as they are acknowledged to advance with greater pace in the latter and the latter there is the evil. Descend between the trading and the country people brought down for slaves the question might be asked whether ours or their own religion contributes most to it. So you see they have started framing the Negro way of life. Remember these books were written at the time the Negroes did not know the slave masters languages and it was never expected that the Negroes would ever read them. So when you see them acting even today, when you see them fighting for one Nigeria and telling you to call your siblings rebels, secessionists or separatists, always remember to ask yourself. Who is that person coming to tell you to kill your brother and what is his interest? The moment you start understanding the slave master's interest, you will see that it is the same game they played during the slave trade. They captured the slaves themselves. But then one key thing we must note here is that the Negroes were ignorant of good and evil or their ignorance of it were equal until the slave master came. And so above where we are reading, we see how they defined religion and it says from the Negro's religion may be drawn these observations. First, the foundation of all men's religions is taken from this visible universe as ancient as the creation. The greater lights that have from time to time appeared in the world are only refinements and superstructures upon this prop. First, milk and then meat. So clearly here we see that the slave masters religions of Christianity and Islam were not given to the Negroes because they were better. It clearly states here that from the Negroes religion may be drawn these observations. But here interestingly it says lastly the fear of the fetish which was what they were calling the Negroes belief in the almighty creator of heaven and earth. It says the fear of the fetish keeps them from injuring one another a little, that is, one another in the same combination but has little or no influence in respect to us, that is the slave master, whom they rob, cheat or murder as best answers their conveniences. Remember the same slave master that is claiming that the negroes murder them and cheat them and kill them came there as a slave hunter. He organizes raids and razzias to massacre negroes in their communities, the same way you see them doing in Biafra and Ambazonia today. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the slave master is a liar, but not a smart liar, but a subtle beast. And for further understanding of what the slave master brought and why he could have given the Negroes his golden calves of Christianity and Islam, let us reference a new voyage to Guinea, describing the customs, manners, soil, climate, habits, buildings, education, manual arts, agriculture, trade, employment, etc by William Smith Esquire appointed by the Royal African Company to survey their settlements, make discoveries etc and this was published in 1744 and here we see that 
the discerning natives accounted their greatest unhappiness that they were ever visited by the Europeans. They say that we Christians introduced the traffic of slaves and that before our coming they lived in peace. But say they, it is observable that wherever Christianity comes, there comes with it a sword, a gun, powder and ball. And indeed, thus far, they say right, for the Christians are continually at war, one with another. You see the same thing they are doing in southern Nigeria today, in Biafra and in Ambazonia. If they claim we are siblings, and you believe we are all the same, and we are all Africans, why is it that when the Negroes ask for their roads or schools to be built in a country they claim is supposedly theirs, where they pay taxes, where their labor and their sweat drives the economy, they are shot and killed? Why is it that if you talk about Biafra, just mentioning Biafra that was there before Nigeria, you are shot and killed by somebody who claims to be your brother? And those who are killed, the government doesn't talk about it. There's nothing like taking care of their children. If they come in and kill father, mother, uncle, and everybody, and leave a four-year-old child behind, nobody takes care of that child, including the government. And of course, the people can only do what they can when they are enslaved as well. And from the comment we are looking at, we see where the writer said, You said that all religious books are fairy tale, but you open only and again the Bible to say nonsense. You want to educate people, but you can't do it for yourself. A blind who want to be a guide, a voice of God. You want to bring back a juju God who write nothing, who talk to no one, who don't need to be worshipped, but had priests. So now my questions are, but our interest is where he said a juju god. First, let's see what the Negroes were worshipping before the slave masters came. And so we reference Atlas Geographus, or a complete system of geography, ancient and modern for Africa, containing what is of most use in blue, Veranius, Celarius, Cluverius, Bodrand, Beatrice, etc. Volume 4, and this was published 1714. And here we see that Depa concludes with their religion. He says, The Negroes own a God that created and governs heaven and earth, but think it neglects to serve him. We are not interested in what happens after. We are interested in the words that said they own a God that created and governs heaven and earth. So our question to you is, the Juju God you say we are bringing back, is it this one that they owned before the slave master came or a different one? Do you even know the meaning of Juju that you are talking about? And he goes further here to tell us that the Negroes can neither read nor write. And to continue them in ignorance, the priests have enjoined it as a law upon themselves to marry into one another's families and to teach nobody else to read or write so that those poor people have only a confused notion of the being of a god. Remember he told us that the Negroes own a god. Here now they are blaming the priests. Always look at the slave master and how he comes. The pattern follows the same. He will put a wedge between you and your brother and then use that to create the war and hide behind one of you to mete out evil on the other. That's his technique. But unfortunately, his slave hunting accomplices who live as enemies within in West and Central Africa today, what he does is he uses them to create the same problem as well. Ask yourself how you can be living in a country where your roof is leaking, it's a public school financed supposedly by the government, even though the government steals from the people, and you say fix that roof, they will take gun and kill you, and still tell you that you are siblings. If you talk about freedom, the same people will take guns from the slave master and kill you. But going forward here, it says that they have a confused notion of the being of a god, but think it not necessary to pray to him, alleging that he who causes tempest, thunder and lightning is so potent that he has no need of our prayers, and that it's impossible he can have a son, and therefore they abhor the Christian religion. And so we ask our friend J. L. Mecca, this was as at 1714, the Negroes abhorred Christianity. So is it the same Christianity that you want to kill people over today? Is it the same Christianity that the slave masters, the British, the Arabs, who flew the fighter jets in the genocide against the Biafra are following today? Or is it the same Islam that they also followed during the slave trade? Which one are we talking about here?